So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! So I want to look at this in many different ways. So the first way is basically this. Let's say, remember, again, all the seats are numbered so you can tell them apart. How many choices do we have for the person that sits in seat number one? Well, there are ten people. So any one of the ten is good for the person that sits in chair number one. Okay, remember, the chairs are labeled literally one, two, three, etc. Okay, uh, let's just make up a name. Let's say A. So if A sits down in chair number one, how many choices are left for chair number two? Well, clearly not all ten, right? So you took one out, so now there are nine left. Okay, and let's put someone down here. Let's say, per, say B. B sits down in seat number two. Once A and B have seated themselves, you don't have ten people anymore. You don't even have nine, right? Now you have eight. So there are eight choices for seat number three. Okay, et cetera, et cetera. So we can put like letter Z here, et cetera, all the way around. And you can see that's going to be 10, 9, 8, all the way down. So times 7, times 6, times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2. And then when we get to seat number 10, there'll only be one seat left and one person left. So there's only one choice over here. Okay, remember our rule of thumb. In the middle of making choices, we multiply. So you have 10 options here, then 9 here, then 8 here. That looks like it's going to be 10 times 9 times 8 all the way on down. So it's going to be 10 factorial. Okay? All right. That's the total number of possible seatings we can get. What about the couple, right? So let's see. So we can put the couple down maybe here, right, in order for them to sit together. Or maybe we could put them down, say, here or here, something like that. Does everybody agree? So we'll do it this way. Let's imagine there's a left side and a right side, okay, or a side that's more counterclockwise. So if here on this side, we'll distinguish it like this. So we're going to put that block of two down. And we're going to look at the side that's more counterclockwise. So it would be like this. And then over here, it would be on this side. Okay? All right. So to know where that block sits, we pick the counterclockwise side, right? How many places can I place this side, the counterclockwise side? Uh, we could do one, well, apparently one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, no big deal. So, but once we place that down, right, we still don't know what that block looks like. Because you have the couple. Let's say the couple, couple is, say, A and B. Okay. So if you want to sit A and B down together, in this setup here, in this particular one, I'm going to say left and right because it's kind of easier to talk about than counterclockwise versus clockwise, but you know what I mean. So if you look over here, right, we don't know if A is on the left and B is on the right, or B is on the left and A is on the right. So for every placement of that block, we have two possibilities, right? So in truth, what we really get is 10 times 2. Okay, so now we do our basic probability thing. The number of ways, remember, the, the classic way of thinking probability is the number of ways of getting what you want over a total number. OK. And in here, if we think of all these possibilities being equally likely, this will work. OK, so what are the total number of possibilities? Well, there are 10 factorial possible setups. OK, we computed that. How many of them give us what we want? Well, apparently, 10 times 2 are 20. So we get 20 up top here. OK? But is that completely right? Not quite. Because what we've actually done here, this is close. But we've placed the couple, and we know where they sit, but we don't know where everyone else sits. So what we really need to do is finish out the rest of this. Okay? So imagine in our scenario again. So for these 20 we're counting. So for every setup in here, we know where the couple sits, right? But we don't know where everyone else sits. But once we place the couple down somewhere, okay. so now we know where the block sits. We know where these guys sit relative to one another at the block, right? But in this setup here, we don't know where everyone else sits. So if you look at the seat over here, on the, so let's call this the head and this the tail. If you look over here, the seat that's next to the tail, well, two people are used up, so that gives you eight possibilities left for who's sitting over here, right? And just like before, that means for the next seat, how many possibilities are left? Seven. And we keep working. In fact, we work our way all the way down back to one. Does everybody agree? So the truth of the matter is, it's ten choices where we put the head of the block. Once we place that block down, there are two choices where we put the two people in the block, right? Once that's done, we still have to make, apparently, eight factorial choices for where everyone else sits. So the right answer is really 20 times 8 factorial. OK, now I think we're good. So when we first worked through this, we figured out we know where the couple sits, and we know who's sitting at the head of that block, right? But we don't know where everyone else sits. And the question isn't figure out where the couple is. The question is figure out uh, all the possible arrangements where the couple sits next to one another. So you have to have the entire arrangement done to know what everything looks like. OK, so with that in mind, we know we're good, because what we really need is just a complete arrangement, right? All right, so what are the arrangements we're looking at? We're looking at 10 possible places where you put the head of the block. OK, and for each one of those setups, there are two places where you can move around the people inside the block. OK, but then after that, there's still what? Eight factorial possibilities for, for where everyone else goes. OK, 
no big deal. So now we see clearly that once we do all these actions and put them together, we will have an arrangement. And these are the arrangements we like, and these are all the possible arrangements. Now the rest is just arithmetic. So 8 factorial cancels 8 factorial on down. So in other words, well, let's write it out. It's 20 times 8 factorial over 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. Because that's really what 10 factorial is, right? And then we chop these guys off. Here, I'm going to divide top and bottom by 10 because that's easy. And I think the answer we're going to get is 2 over 9. Okay? All right. The thing that's nice about this is as long as you have a good model, right, and you think it through logically, no matter how you do it, you will get the right answer. Okay? So let's do this problem again. And let's do it this way. 